there. This question comes from Gary John Fox Jr. And he says, Ralph, are you aware of the enormous amount of evidence that contradicts the official account of the September 11th attacks? And isn't the so-called war on terror a false narrative designed to keep the military, industrial, congressional and media complex in control? Why have you been quiet about 9-11? Well, I haven't been quiet about 9-11. My first criticism was of the 9-11 Commission report, which was prohibited in its charter from assigning responsibilities for any culpabilities it may have documented. Now, right from the get-go, that, in effect, aborted the full purpose of any investigative commission, which is you get the facts, you develop the patterns of what happened, and you assign responsibilities for people who are culpable in allowing it to happen, or nuances in between. That's number one. Number two, the 9-11 report ignored a lot of questions. It was, for example, forced by the White House to have depositions of George W. Bush and Dick Cheney in secret, and they couldn't take notes. The commission was not allowed to take notes of the interrogation of George W. Bush and Dick Cheney. So slam number two. Slam number three is that it produced a report that became a taboo to challenge. So anybody who challenged it was considered kooky or a conspiracy person. Well, you know, there's a very thoughtful professor, David Ray Griffin, who's written more than one book analyzing the flaws in the 9-11 Commission report and other aspects of the 9-11 event. And, of course, he was never debated because he was considered a conspiracy theorist. You see how something completely shuts down the right of debate and cross-examination. Now, New York City had enough people, and they didn't want to take the 9-11 report as gospel, and so they had a referendum in 2009 to start their own 9-11 investigation. Unfortunately, it was bogged down, and I don't think it ever prevailed, and that was never picked up. But there were thousands thousands of people in New York City saying, hey, look, this thing hit our city, and we've got questions that haven't been answered, and we're going to have our own investigation. The other aspect is that without the families of the deceased in 9-11, the mothers and others who went to Washington, there wouldn't even have been a 9-11 commission report. Hey, what are you talking about? A major attack on the United States and there wasn't going to be an official federal government report if it wasn't for the families of the deceased? Another element of skepticism there. Jim Ridgway wrote a book. He's a fabled journalist, very down to earth, called Five Unanswered Questions on 9-11. So in order to deal with this, we had a program called Debating Taboos. And because most of the important questions in our country are never debated, they're taboos. Anyway, if you go to debatingtaboos.org, you'll see there were four debates, including missile defense, that are online. And I tried to get people who believe in the 9-11 establishment version to debate some sober critics. And they wouldn't do it because they didn't want to be tainted, you see. Again, the feature of a taboo society. So it's a good question, Gary Fox. Go to debatingtaboos.org, see what I mean. And if you come up with anybody who believes unquestionably in the establishment explanation of 9-11 and who's willing to debate it, its critics, let us know. Boy. There are other things, wholly inexplicable stuff like our plea to the FAA after the uh, hijacked planes to Cuba in the early 70s to fortify doors and locks of these cockpit doors, and they would never do it because right. it cost each airplane 3000 bucks. Right. You know, that could have prevented 9-11, you see. They could never have gotten control of the planes. And why wasn't that investigated by the 9-11 Commission? You know, it's just all kinds of stuff. Anyway, you're going to get a real feedback on that last question. Wait and see. Well, let, let me ask you this, Ralph. What do you think the real story of 9-11 is? 
I don't know the full story, and that's enough for an investigation. I don't know why the FBI didn't heed the warnings from its FBI offices. I don't know why there wasn't enough alert for the jet planes to get up quicker. I don't know why in a NSA surveillance world, all kinds of communications were not intercepted. You know, all kinds of questions that need to be asked. And those are, are more of the obvious questions. But when you have the only investigative commission prohibited from assigning responsibility or accountability, you know that they were not able to go as far as perhaps some of the commission members wanted to go themselves. But how far would you go in suspecting that, like, 9-11 truthers believe that it was actually came from the White House or came came from us? That Would you go that far? I don't speculate. I, I'm an evidence-driven analyst. Obviously, it played into the hands of the military-industrial complex. Whatever the source of the attack was, it allowed for bigger military budgets. It gave George Bush an opportunity to stifle dissent and put the Democrats on the, the defensive. It provided huge contracts for corporations. It provided for George Bush being able to avoid paying attention to domestic necessities of the American people because of the all-consuming passion he had for the war on terror, as he called it. So it did play into the hands of the military-industrial complex. That doesn't mean that it came out of the military-industrial complex. And so I don't speculate. I don't engage in those kinds of suppositions.